that beautiful Saturday morning and in feeding beach. So it's a beautiful cathedral which is the cathedral. Actually, it's an open house today, so we are going to be taking questions on breastfeeding. Just put your questions together for the six minutes. Invite your friends to join us this morning. Invite um, mothers who have to, people who are breastfeeding at the moment in the world to come back their questions. We also remind you to please put your questions on the video itself. Don't put it on the watch party or share post because we will not be able to see it whilst we are live. Have a beautiful morning. In the meantime, I'm going to be inviting Dr. Dulu Salabridi, who will be taking us through the open life discussion. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to ATP Life on Breastfeeding. As we are all aware that this is our breastfeeding week, and so um, uh, breastfeeding week is celebrated worldwide every uh um every first to the 7th of august every year in to commemorate breastfeeding to promote awareness about breastfeeding and so we've been celebrating uh breastfeeding week on active pediatrician foundation from the first of august and so this is another opportunity for us so we decided to this our acp live today should be focused on breastfeeding in honor of the breastfeeding week and so if you have questions on breastfeeding please only on breastfeeding feel free to drop it on the um as comments and we'll feature your questions and then we'll be able to go on and so also try and uh, share the uh the video so that more people will join us i'm trying to create the watch party file so that more people can join us as well uh so feel free um to drop your questions whether you're watching on the group or you're watching on the on the in the directly on the video in our foundation page so feel free to join us Okay, so uh, so, so the next part is also on. Um, uh, for our moderators who are on the on the watch party, so you can help us to move uh, questions to the. Okay. To the to the to the uh, page itself, so that people can we can see the questions. We can only see questions on the we can only see questions posted directly under the video. All right, I can see some um, Fatima is ready with us this morning. Good morning, Fatima. Uh, thank you for joining us. Okay, so. Um, this morning, again, like we said, it is the breastfeeding week and we are going to be um, talking about breastfeeding. So, uh, if you have questions, join us and drop your questions and then we'll get them featured. And I can see some of you have updated your, your profile page to reflect the word breastfeeding week. Thank you so much for doing that. All right, so uh, this, the theme for this uh, breastfeeding week is empower parents, enable breastfeeding. We're, we're trying to em empower parents. And for us on ACP, one of the ways by which we empower parents is by with this kind of um, uh, 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 what we're doing just right now, which is just talking about uh, uh, uh breastfeeding itself and letting people know about breastfeeding and why it's important for us to breastfeed i know many people on ATP by now they are getting <laughs> i don't know whether they're getting tired of hearing about breastfeeding but we'll keep on talking about breastfeeding so 
uh, feel free to ask us any question. Okay. I try to answer some questions on the first day. Ask me about breastfeeding. And so many, many questions. We have over like 400 comments <laughs> and in, in within a few hours so that shows a lot of people have a lot of questions about breastfeeding of course one of the questions were also more like repeating the same questions and but we're happy to answer them because we want you to understand breastfeeding and want you to understand what is exclusive breastfeeding and want you to uh, uh practice it because it, of course of the immense benefits that comes with breastfeeding so it's very important Okay, so, Busola, we don't have any question yet. I don't know whether there are any no, question on the wash party. No, okay. uh, maybe we can look at this. Okay, I can see. Okay, yeah. So I will just look um, so that we can. Oh, oh okay, we... sorry. <laughs> Okay, so while we're waiting for questions on the on um, while we're waiting for questions, I'm just going to uh, talk a little bit more about just give a general overview. Okay, Busala, is that okay? It's very fun. hello, Busala. Yes, I'm with you. <laughs> yes, I'm with you. <laughs> okay, because I can't hear you. Okay, all right. Oh, so I was just saying that. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get that. No, I said it's okay. Before you finish the overview, over, hopefully people will come up on come online and post questions. Okay, all right. So, um, if you're on the watch party, please, we will not see your questions. So we will increase the indulgence of our um, moderators to help us move your questions to the um, to the to oh, our. Because uh to the video itself so that we can we can definitely see what is uh going on yeah okay i think okay so i think they i can see a few moderators on it now so they will get to us so what is breastfeeding i mean the name is self-explanatory it means feeding your baby with breast milk usually breast milk produced by the mother and that is what breastfeeding is all about. And now there are so many terminologies when it comes to breastfeeding. So we talk about things like exclusive breastfeeding. We talk about um, predominant breastfeeding and all that. So I'm also going to that. And when we talk about exclusive breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding means feeding your baby with breast milk only for the first three months, uh, six months of life. And when we say breast milk only, we mean breast milk only. So no water no agbo no formula nothing else only breast milk and this is what is recommended and what we recommend is that all babies should be fed only with breast milk for the first um uh three uh, six months of life Whoa, what am i in my mouth saying three months today <laughs> the first six months so all you need to feed the baby for the first six months is just breast milk and breast milk only and last uh many people were asking me um during the open house we had on the first of august that oh dr Bumi, do you think that breast milk will be sufficient for my baby for the first six months I'm not, i don't think breast milk is enough and i found that that is one of the reasons why most mothers don't exclusively breastfeed because they felt maybe the breast milk is not enough and sometimes some mothers some grandparents will even tell you please don't starve the baby or give other food give other things and which is actually wrong so i just want to reassure all of you listening to me this morning that for the first six months of life breast milk is enough for your baby the breast milk you produce is enough and even whether your baby is a twin you can exclusively breastfeed them as well so you can produce enough because breast milk is about demand and supply the more you ask for the more will be produced. So if you are breastfeeding twins they are, you and they are both sucking, then there will be more production of breast milk. So breast milk is enough to feed your baby for the first six months of life. And after six months, it doesn't mean you need to stop breastfeeding. It just means you need to add other food because it is after six months that breast milk is not enough to sustain your baby. And then you need to give other food, but you should still continue to breastfeed even for the first um 
uh, what they call it, for the first uh, two years of life. And if you can even do beyond, you should breastfeed your baby. So this is what we recommend as pediatricians. And trust me, we don't just make this recommendation. These are things based on evidence. These are things based on research. I actually don't like to boil down mothers with all this research. But trust me, whether you're in America, whether you're in US, whether you're in UK, uh, in US or UK or any part of the world you have, you should exclusively breastfeed your baby. I know some of you go to some countries to have your babies and then they give you formula and you are thinking, oh, that means that it's, it's, it's only uh, those of us in the third world. That you no, it is not. Even they are now battling, trying to get their mothers to accept breastfeeding because they know the immense benefits that come with breastfeeding, which I'm still going to talk about. But trust me that breast milk is enough to sustain your baby for the first six months of life. So you don't need to give formula, you don't need to give water, you don't need to give anything. And that question most people always ask is that, uh, why wouldn't the baby need water? Because breast milk contains a lot of water. In fact, 60, uh, almost close to 80% of breast milk is water. So there's really no need to add any extra water because the breast milk itself already contains lots and lots of water. And now, why is it that we recommend breast milk? Because people just give it just milk. Why can't I just give formula? Why can't I just give another milk? Because breast milk is usually more than uh, food because people just think it's about feeding. No, it's not about feeding. It is more to breast milk than just feeding. So breast milk also contains elements that protect your baby against infections. And this is because breast milk is not just, it's made up of water. It's made up of the lactose, which is the milk sugar. And it is made up also of antibodies and other agents that are what's protective of your baby and these are things from the mother so there are things that are specific for your own baby because you are the one that has been exposed to that infections in your own environment you are the one that has been exposed to those uh, agents uh, and you have produced antibodies that can fight them and so what you do is to pass it on to your baby and those are things that protect your baby in that first six months of life when your baby is still so uh fragile and when they are learning to uh, you know, their own immune system is learning to develop antibodies as well. So it is very important. So the breast milk of a mother from, from another country will not even do that for your baby because what her experience has been is not so. If each baby's breast milk is unique, each mother is unique. So the breast milk you give to your baby is unique. And I, you can trust me that all the all the other things that, that are being sold in the market as alternative what we call breast milk substitutes they can never be that they can never give that personalized <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, protection to your baby that breast milk offers your baby and if you most of you if you read on the can of the teens or some of these mis breast milk substitutes you will they also write it that, that breast milk is best for your baby yeah. the only reason why we're having some of those breast milk substitutes is that there are some very very rare and circumstances where breast milk may not be available and when breast milk is not available then we have no choice than to use a substitute for example a mother can be dead you know and or you know our mother cannot breastfeed or maybe because she has for example a mother has cancer she's on anti-cancer medications of course she can't breastfeed so those are a few instances where we have to give alternatives but now people are now using what's supposed to be like alternative for those rare issues they want to use it as the number one no breast is the best for your baby and that is what is recommended for all babies irrespective of which part of the world and what we are trying to do this morning is, as as we're celebrating the breastfeeding week for 2019 is to empower parents and when we say parents we mean it's not only mothers because most people think oh breast is all about the women no the fathers are involved as well because you really need to support the mothers we need the men as well because these men, men are the ones sometimes they are the bosses at work they are the one making policies we need to make sure that everybody is supporting mothers because breastfeeding is not just for the baby it's not just for the mother it's also for the family it's also for the society we're still going to get into that maybe as time goes on but i just want to let you know what breastfeeding is and why it's important for us to exclusively breastfeed our baby and then breastfeed for as long as possible because it is the best thing for our babies. Thank you so much. I think we have some questions already showing up. 
Okay, so Nelson, enjoy. Good morning, ma. Please, how long should a mother breastfeed a baby? Some people say one year, others say two years. Thank you, uh, Nelson Joy, for that beautiful question. Uh, let's start by saying that um, you should breastfeed. I already answered that question. For the first six months, breast milk only. And then you should keep breastfeeding for two years and beyond. So I have some of my friends who are also working in this uh, field of breastfeeding. And I mean, they have groups. Their own group is all about breastfeeding. And some of them have been breastfeeding the baby for two and a half years. Some have been breastfeeding the baby for three years. <laughs> so you can breastfeed for as long as you and your baby wants. Uh, so there's no, two years is just like minimum recommendation, but you can do it for as long as you like. So, but what we want you to do at least is that that first six months only breast milk and then you can breastfeed for up to two years you can breastfeed as long but it's still better some people ah, so doctor i can't do two years so maybe i'll do one year but it's still better you do that than not do it at all so but the one that is more primarily important the longer you breastfeed the better for you and for your baby because breast milk protects you the mother against breast cancer people don't know one of the protective factors against breast cancer is for the duration of breastfeeding. So the longer you are breastfeeding, you are protecting yourself against breast cancer, against uterine cancers, against ovarian cancer. So mothers are also benefiting from breastfeeding. It's not just the baby. So these are the reasons why you should breastfeed for as long as possible. But at least the compulsory part is that six months only breast milk for the first six months. Then you should breastfeed for as long as possible, whatever you are comfortable with. But we usually recommend minimum of two years and if you can do more than that fine if you think oh i only managed one year it's okay but at least make sure you do as long as you can thank you uh thank nelson you, okay let's move on to the next question Logzi obiosa good morning ma thank you for your great job you are all angels Ma, I want to know what is the right age to stop our baby from breastfeeding. We just took question. Okay, I think we just answered that question. You guys are more interested in stopping the breastfeeding, Nani. <laughs> okay, don't worry. So you can do two years, two years minimum. Thank you so much. Okay. She Wendy is saying good morning. Good morning to you as well. Okay, let's move on. Good morning, Doctor. Right. Short and straight to the point. <laughs> Yeah, I want to ask this Does the composition of breast milk change based on the diet of the mother or other factors? For example, can a mother eat out or drink something and the baby will have? I don't know, it's like, uh, we'll have what is this question is incomplete or is it because okay, we'll have a reaction due to the food the mother has. Okay, I can see from my hand here. Uh, so I can't keep your question so short. If it's too long, it's, it will get caught down by the uh, the laptop. I don't know. I, I'm trying to... Okay, so um, I understand the question you're asking is the father. The composition of breast milk do changes. There's some basic things in breast milk. There's water, there's uh, the lactose, sugar, um, the, the fats, uh, what we put like oligosaccharides and all that, and then there are proteins, uh, and some of these proteins include like antibodies, all the amino acids, they are there in breast milk. So breast milk is a complete food for the baby, and it's a very balanced food. It also has antibodies, it also has some other agents, uh, uh, which we call uh, anti-infective agents. There are different names for them. I don't want to boil you down with all those Jargons, but basically, and your breast meat varies also depending on what you a mother has experienced, like I said. So the kind of antibodies you produce as well. Now, the kind of food you eat, we are, we encourage mothers to eat balanced diets, to take multivitamins that will affect the vitamin levels in your breast. And there are some things you eat that is passed on via breast milk as well. So some medications you take. Some food you eat is passed on via breast milk to your baby, which is a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Otherwise, if you if you are allergic to something or your baby is allergic to something and you eat something that your baby is allergic to, it will be passed on via breast milk to the baby 
and that may lead to the baby having a reaction. And so that's why you have to be very careful. And one of the things that we always talk about is the fact that it's really about drugs. So because so as a breastfeeding mother, please don't use medication by yourself. So you should only use prescribed medication by your doctors. And even when you're really using prescribed medication, also read the leaflet. They always write something about pregnancy and breastfeeding mothers. There's always that section in all the leaflets of medication. And it's a, for a purpose because some drugs are not suitable for a breastfeeding mother. I'll give a typical example. A breastfeeding mother who has diarrhea, most people will take tetracycline for diarrhea. But if you are breastfeeding, you can't take tetracycline. Because if you take tetracycline, for example, it will pass via your breast milk to your baby. And when it gets to your baby, your baby is going to cause a permanent discoloration of that baby's teeth. Permanent teeth. And that baby's teeth will always be brownish, green, or something like that. So this is one of the reasons why you can't just take any medication. So it's very, very important that you are very, very careful. But the, most of the food that you take, if you are on, if you as a mother, you don't react to the food you are taking, it is very, very unlikely your baby is going to react to it because your allergy is actually genetic. Unfortunately, most of that gene that controls allergy is from the mother's side most of the time. So it's very unusual for your baby to react to something that you are not reacting to. It's possible, but it's very rare. So it's, and you will immediately notice that it's mainly when I hit this particular food, my baby becomes fussy or something is happening, then you can stop it. But most of the other food they are fine. The issue areas is the drugs and other, um, like some other spices people take, some things people have, so some of the things they take, you know, like uh, flavors or things like that. Some of them, they contain chemicals that can be passed via breast milk. And when it gets to the baby, the baby could react to them. So I hope that's answered your question. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next question by Jake again. Jake Olukosi, Alalade is asking, is there anything wrong mm -hmm. in introducing solids from four months if the baby seems to show interest in other foods? Thank you, Joke. Now, this is a very common question people ask all the time because, and I always ask the mother, where are you rushing to? Where is the essence of, oh, we just want to start this complimentary free so early? No. The reason why we say six months is because there are research that has backed it up. I know before we used to say four to six months, but now the research has shown that your baby's tummy is not yet ready. So, introduction of food is not even just because it's convenient or it's not convenient or the pediatrician just wants you to breastfeed and all that. No, it's also about the baby's intestines' ability to digest the food. So, you're giving your baby a bowel go since so <laughs> your baby's tummy is not yet ready. So, we we'll find out from research that the best time to introduce those solids is from six months. That is when the tummy is ready. That is when the immune system is ready to handle that. Before that time, what your baby can handle is milk. Milk and milk only. And I always tell mothers, even if, because no matter how much we preach exclusive breastfeeding, the practice of exclusive breastfeeding is still about 17%, which means that Majority of people that are listening to me this morning, they only say, Dr. Baby, you are talking your own. I'm not going to do exclusive breastfeeding. So, which means that most of you are not doing exclusive breastfeeding. And but what that means is that even if you are not going to do exclusive breastfeeding, please give milk, not solids, until six months. So, but what is the best? So, so my job is to tell you what is best for your baby. It is your job to decide. I can't force you, and there's no law right now that say if you don't breastfeed it's people come and arrest you <laughs> so there's no love so we can only appeal to you we can only empower you by giving you information by supporting you and whatever you want us to do so telling you this is the best based on research and all that so um your tummy yeah your baby's tummy is not yet ready to digest solids on the six months so please wait and don't rush. And one of the reasons big mothers have babies who have fussy, uh, who became fussy with food and all that is because we are also rushing uh, too early to to start our babies on solids. There's no rush. And even when mothers, because I answer a lot of questions on this, so I'll digress a little bit on it. Even when mothers start uh, the solid at six months, they just want the baby to go from all meat diets to all solid diets in 24 hours. And they always complain, it's not hitting, it's not hitting. And I'm just like, you, you started 
complimentary food. Uh, your baby is six, six months old, and you're already complaining that your baby is not re is rejecting all food. It means you are giving too much already. You are trying too hard. At six months, your baby should only take one extra meal or two of solids of the solid, which means the, the majority of the food of a six month old baby is still breastfeeding. So uh, I was surprised when mothers were asking me, uh, it's now six months and my baby is rejecting all food. You only supposed to give it once or twice. Your baby should still take more breast milk. So it's a gradual process. And I always use this analogy that when you guys when I go to other countries, for example, I don't always adjust immediately to their diet. It takes me a uh, for try taste and I know some of you are very adventurous and you can always jump straight on into any new thing, but I'm not like that. And most babies are not like that. So when they have been introduced to solid, it takes them a few days to adjust. So even the first time it's just one spoon, even the size, maybe the next time you make it three spoons and five spoons, that's how you do it gradually until the baby is now able to take more solid. But you can't expect maybe to go from taking 120 meals of breast meat to taking 120 meals of uh, uh, a cereal. No, it's not going to work that way. So, and this is why mothers get frustrated with and um, with uh, introducing complementary food, and they start getting upset so early. At six months, seven months, people are already telling me they've tried all the different food, and I'm like, no, you're trying too hard because it means you are not doing it properly. So, please, the baby is not ready until six months to start solid, and even when you start. It's going to be gradual. Please don't be in a hurry because at the end of the day, it's going to be counterproductive. So let's just take it one step at a time. All right, thank you. Let's move on. <laughs> Fatima, no, we're taking this question. Let's move to the next one. Fatima Ochua, okay. please, ma'am. After the mother wins the baby, what method is best to stop the milk from coming out and also reduce the pain that comes with it? Okay, so, um, okay, yeah, it's still about breastfeeding, so I will answer because I just like ask me about the breastfeeding part, not the stopping the breastfeeding. Okay, so, uh, we re we've done a, a, a group discussion on how to win, simple tips for winning, and we have an article on our website and our app on simple steps for winning the baby from the breast. So, please do take time to read that, but it's just simple, you keep wearing your firm breast milk operates breastfeeding operates on the law of demand and supply when there's no demand for your breast milk when there's no sucking on it the the baby the brain gets that information and it will begin to shut down the production immediately the body the nature abhors waste and all that so you don't need to worry it will stop for the pain, take painkillers, paracetamol, ibuprofen. Just use it where your farm bra for you two, two days or three days, you'll be fine. In most people in one week, you'll be fine. Occasionally, we have people who have some hormonal imbalance, maybe a little bit of high prolactin levels, which means that they will keep on producing breast milk longer than necessary. For those ones, they, I would encourage them to see their doctors, like the gynecologist or even the general doctors. There are medications that they can prescribe to dry up their milk and to regulate their hormones. But otherwise, most people also stop breastfeeding. You wear your fan bra, you have pain for two or three days, use your painkillers, you'll be fine. All right, thank you. From Winnie Nacho, what can be done for a three month old baby, breastfed baby who is still having colic? Colic is common in babies, it will stop hanging there, it will stop. Usually, most of them stop having it around that three months, four months. So just hang in, it will it'll soon be over. All right, I think we've answered this question. Is it advisable for a pregnant woman to still breastfeed? Okay. Um, the, how, well, so I will answer this question. Let me answer it very well. I will go a little bit more than what the person is asking. Number one, please, when you've had your baby, eh, after six weeks, eh, go for family planning. Go for family planning. I know what I'm talking because. I answer this question like every time. <laughs> and I'm just like, seriously, why are you getting pregnant when you're still breastfeeding? Because you should not be getting pregnant when you're still breastfeeding. To be honest, let's talk to ourselves, man. Okay? Mothers, I know you're listening to me this morning. Please, breastfeeding can prevent you from getting pregnant. Good. 
but it's not 100 percent in other words it can fail so some people say as long as i'm breastfeeding i can't get pregnant so because of that they stop using the um, um they they don't take any other precautions and all that it's okay for you to have sexual intercourse with your husband when you have your baby there's nothing wrong with that but if you know you are not ready for another pregnancy please don't rely on breastfeeding only some people's body are so good uh, if they are breastfeeding and they're not seeing the period they won't get pregnant but some people's own they will get pregnant anyway they are so fatter so please for so, so to avoid uh stories that touch like this eh please go for family planning i'm begging you all. when you go for your six weeks postpartum check the gynecologist always asks you and i know they do ask you okay have you gone for family planning whether you, whatever method you want to use is up to you whether you want to take injections whether you want to have a coil whatever because i do keep telling mothers that all these things is going to end up on your home body your body needs to recover you, 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 it's not as if you can't do it but your body is suffering for it and that's why some people look so hard because they are use their body too much <laughs> if you want me to put it that way anyway so so basically i don't want a situation where breastfeeding mothers are getting pregnant you should breastfeed for like two years and so that after that two years your body is ready for the next you are now ready for another level that's when you should start trying for the new one so i think there should be a gap of like two years between your babies that is the recommendation okay but if for any reason now you've gotten pregnant and you are still breastfeeding what we recommend is that you keep on breastfeeding your baby um but you may need to you will need maybe additional calories so because your baby the one that is breastfeeding is taking a lot of calories and nutrients from you and the other baby uh, which is inside the womb is also going to demand on you so there's a lot of demand on you and all of them are taking it from you so you are the one that needs to make sure that you are getting your uh so even so I, I personally there's no law really but i would say if your baby is already from the age of um maybe a year or so that's already on complementary feeding i would just say stop but if your baby is still young like a three months old is you have to keep breastfeeding you know, because that baby still need breast milk or hey so you are going to people now say that baby is getting sick he's having diarrhea why would the baby have it it's not because of your pregnancy wrong belief it is because you stop breastfeeding that baby and you are not even having enough time to take care of yourself just less of taking care of the baby so at the end of the day you are the one that is going to and some mothers have very difficult pregnancies yeah the first three months for a meeting here they can barely do anything so i don't want i don't know why you want to put yourself through all this demanding work so i would say please please avoid getting pregnant when you are breastfeeding but if you get pregnant good luck you just have to do it <laughs> you have to do it but it's better to avoid it and so that you're because it, it takes research i think that it takes your body that two years to get back to your pre-pregnancy state so it takes two years for you yourself to fully recover and number one their second pregnancy is also higher risk pregnancy because your body has not yet fully recovered and you're getting pregnant again so risks of having anemia risks of that pregnancy becoming complicated or you losing that pregnancy or even losing yourself is higher that is the honest truth and that's why we don't want you to go through all that so it is not only for you it's also for the baby a lot of risks involved so please and especially for those of you who have had CS, I do even hear some of them say I have CS. Please, it's not you just go for your family planning. Don't there's no family planning is available in all the health center is free. So go for it. There's no excuse whatsoever. All right, let's move on. <laughs> there's another question from Joker again. She says, and it's another Joker. Joker. <laughs> it's the same Joker. She says, uh, yeah. just curiosity. If one mm. lives in a very hot environment, do babies mm. feel thirsty? Because as mm. adults, even if one is taking only fluids, we still feel like drinking water. Will it still be wrong to give little quantity of clean water, especially when the weather is very hot? Okay, so 
I've already told you, breast milk is water. It has water. It's not difficult. So the babies don't get tested because when they are tested, they will ask for more breast milk and you just give them more breast milk. That's all. So the same way, you, even those of you that live in an area where it's hot and cold, it's not only breast milk, you, it's not only water you drink now. People just drink other things and it will still be okay for you. So you can, breast milk has water. So a, a baby in that area most likely would demand for breast milk. And baby will be fine. So don't even need to worry yourself. Babies, babies, uh, God has made babies in a way that they know what they want. They can survive without you. I'm telling you the honest truth. So if you, if you, a baby was born and baby just put, on, I'm sure most of you have watched that breast milk, uh, breastfeeding video. The baby knows how to locate the mother's breast without any help. The baby will wriggle, wriggle up, lash to the breast and suck. So it means the baby knows what they want and they only demand when they need it. So they know when to ask for breast milk. So don't, don't try and impose your own uh, adult experience on them. <laughs> that, oh, how would they have for water? They don't need water. When they are ready to eat, they take their mother's breast. And they will show you the breastfeeding cue. They cry. They start uh, pulling on your breasts and all that. They, they're giving you a sign that it's time to feed. And you feed them. They are getting their food and their water at the same thing. So you can do the experiment, express your breast milk, stand it up for like 24 hours and come and tell me and measure the quantity, the aspect of it that is water and the aspect of it that is uh, milk. You will see that what I'm telling you that 70 to 80% of breast milk is water. So there's really no need for you. And the first part of breast that comes out is the watery part, the forming, usually more watery, more liquid than the, the, the latter part that is thicker. And that is why they need both of them. So please make sure that you you don't need to give your baby water. Just give breast milk only. That's it. You see, most of the time, the water you are giving is what is causing the problem. Number one, most of you, the water you're even giving is not clean. We don't have most of most of the water in Nigeria. There is no portable water and all that. So in the process, that's how some people introduce germs to the baby. Then babies are having diarrhea, blah, blah, blah. Two, if you don't, if you first say if I'm giving the sealed uh, water that is bottled water and all that you are watering down the the milk part of the baby so the baby is going to have malnutrition because the water is not the calories what is the calorie is the milk so if you give too much of water it means that the baby's tummy is very small most of the time the tummy is like just my face so that's why they have to feed more frequently every two to three hours so if you give them water into their tummy the tummy will be full the baby will keep quiet but the baby has not gotten any calories and that's why some of them don't gain weight properly so there is really absolutely no need for water just breast milk and they will get their water from breast milk i hope that's fine thank you shall i let me see how can i lie down to breastfeed my baby Okay, so you need to see this technique because I see a lot of questions about lying down, lying down, lying down. There's nothing wrong, absolutely wrong with lying down to breast milk, but you just need to know how to do it because you need to do it in a way that, number one, you are not shocking on the baby. The baby is properly positioned and all that. So uh, we have a breast a video on position for breastfeeding. I will encourage you to watch that so I can see practically how it's done. If you are not comfortable or you don't know how to do it, please don't do it. Sit up and breastfeed your baby on your bed. Rest your back, put something under your foot or your pillow under where yeah, you can breastfeed. But if you learn it, and I think it's easier when your babies are bigger because bigger babies, they can even hold the breast by themselves. They can undo it more compared to the baby. So you really need to be careful. If you are not so sure, please check first that you know how to do it. Watch videos and all that. And do it. But if you are still not comfortable, please sit up and breastfeed your baby. But if you are, if you know how to do it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, lying down to breastfeed your baby. Okay, I think I've answered my questions on, the, on breastfeeding. Please don't get pregnant while you're breastfeeding. Okay, let's move on quickly to this question from Chidima Onyagba. What? How can I? I'm sure she meant what. What can I take to increase breast milk production? So breastfeeding production, let me quickly talk about breast, how is breast milk produced? Contrary to your belief, breast milk is produced in your brain, not in your breasts. <laughs> That's the honest truth. So the signal to produce breast milk comes from the brain. 
And the number one reason most mothers are having difficulty with breastfeeding is because they are stressed out. When you are stressed and you're worried and you are anxious and you are overwhelmed, the brain sends a message that we are stressed here. We need stress hormones to undo the stress. What this and what the breast stress hormones does are they stop breastfeeding production. They want to focus on other things in the brain. And so the first thing I always tell mothers when it comes to breastfeeding, it looks like what the, what is the doctor saying? They ask me what can I take to take, what can I take to increase my breast milk? And you are saying rest, relax. That is it, because it is when you rest and you relax. Your the, the hormones that will, will make your breasts to produce milk, that's when they get produced. But as long as you are stressed, even the way some people will ask my ask me question, I know they are stressed. And when they are stressed, there is no amount of water or pap or whatever, kunu or whatever you take. The, your your brain is shutting down breast milk production. It's no milk is going to come out. So you for for need to relax and you need to be confident. I can breastfeed my baby. My mother breastfed me, so I can breastfeed my. <laughs> you can, you can see. I said that's why I put. That's why I celebrate bre- EBF babies on its EP. That's the only babies we celebrate because I want you to know that other people can do it. If they can do it, they don't have two heads. You can do it as well. So you can do it. That is the first thing you need to do. Believe that you can do it. Don't listen to all those people telling you are you are serving your baby. Oh, this, uh, that, 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 all those uh, visitors, all those grandparents, they are listening to me. They are the one that always discourage mothers from breastfeeding their babies. And, it's, and when they start stressing you out, you start losing confidence in yourself, you are producing stress hormones, which counter the production of breastfeeding. So number one, relax. You can breastfeed. Other people are breastfeeding their babies. You can do it. People are breastfeeding twins. You have only one baby, you can do it. Trust me. Two, and that's why I like this homo gossip, so that all the people that are coming to your house, let them help you do the housework. Let them do all those things. Focus on, all you need to do as a new mom is to breastfeed your baby, and that's it. Breastfeed and sleep. That's all you need to do. So that's what I want you to focus on. Two, eat. Eat normally. Time for breastfeeding is not the time to wash your waist. I know most mothers are worried, but uh, good news for you. Breastfeeding actually can make you lose weight. So, but that's not the time to start also focusing or stressing yourself out about, oh, I'm this, oh, I'm now figure 21, I'm now this thing. No, please, that's not the time to stress yourself about it. Focus on your on the baby first, and that's it. But if you focus on the baby, you relax, you're not worried about weight, you're not worried about trying to, to diet. We don't recommend dieting, we don't recommend using any medication. What we recommend is diet control, exercise, no drugs, no tea, nothing else to try and lose your weight. Those are the things that will disturb your breastfeeding. So relax, focus on the baby. Breastfeed your baby. That's it. Breast milk works on the uh, the principle of demand and supply. It's very important that people get that because many people will tell me my baby is not breastfeeding well and my milk is not flowing. So you are using formula and you expect the milk to flow, is you're actually working against the milk flowing because when you're using alternative, it means your baby is spending less time sucking on the breast. The less time your baby suck on the breast, the less the production of the milk. That's it. So if your baby, if you think your milk is not producing enough, you maybe need to suck more. It is the sucking of the baby that actually, when the baby suck, the hormones, the uh, prolactin, all those oxytocin, all those hormones that are involved in breastfeeding, they are released. And what it means that they produce more milk. So most time people worry unnecessary about things they should not worry about. So if you if your, your baby is not your milk is not enough and you are giving alternative milk, then you're actually shutting down the production the more. So relax, eat, eat sensibly, drink lots of fluids, breastfeed the more. In the beginning, you, you may need to breastfeed your baby like several times. You will like see the baby is sucking almost every hour. Just do it. It is that sucking that is releasing more milk. The more your baby suck, the more breast milk you produce. And that's the way uh, forward. I hope that helps. So there are people that say there are special food, like oh, take this one, take that one. It helps with milk production. Yeah, we know there are some things people and know and then Doc Sally have claimed to help pre- pre- I'm okay with any you taking anything that is food, but please don't use alcohol. Don't take palm wine that is fermented or anything like that. If what whatever other thing they recommend for you is kunu, is this, is millet, whatever. As long as it's food, please go ahead and take it. It's pap, go ahead and take it. 
but don't take alcohol, don't use drugs. Don't, those are my own uh, caveats to those uh, recommendations. But I'm telling you, it's not a matter of what food or whatever you eat or not. It's a matter of relaxed mind. It's a matter of um, feeding your baby. Make sure your baby is close by. Watch and make sure you're, you are happy about your baby. You are excited about your baby. Sometimes just thinking of your baby, your meat will start, will start flowing. So that's how it works. <laughs> I hope that is helpful. All right, let's move on. I think our time is running up now. Yeah, from Cynthia. Oh, Good morning, I doctor. Thank you for your lectures. Is it necessary to give drugs like Abidec and so on during the first six months of life for a baby on exclusive breastfeeding? Okay, uh, it is really not necessary. It is not because if you as a mom, you are really taking some of these multi vitamins, your babies will get it. But if you want to give it because some mothers just like to do something, it's okay. It's multi vitamins, it's fine if you want to do it, but it's absolutely really, really not necessary. Uh, um, and actually, because you say all drugs like Abidec and so on, uh, let me. I don't know what the so horn is, so the only one I'm saying you can give is the vitamin drop. <laughs> Every other so horn behind the young vitamin, no, <laughs> because this so horn is so, and I know in, uh, coming from a Nigerian mother, and I know what normally happens when we have babies in our families, and then the grandmother, what I call a jogba syndrome, and you have like 10 drugs that the baby must take every day. No, please. If it's only vitamin, that's hey, only one the vitamin drops, it's okay. But even that one is absolutely not necessary. But nothing else. So, so please remove the so horn or let me know what the so horn is, and I can clarify that one by one. So the only one you've written is okay, but nothing else after that. Let's move on. From Ruth Jerry. Good morning, doctor. When a doctor prescribes drugs for a nursing mom, and I read mm. that the indication that it should be avoided in breastfeeding is it okay to stop the medication yeah so this is a very good question uh it's it's important number one i always said uh, not similar that it's important for one that whenever you see your doctor you let them know that you are pregnant or you're breastfeeding please it's important some of you just
sorry. Um, I apologize for going off. <laughs> My internet went off briefly. Okay, I don't know whether I'm back now. Uh, I'm sorry. To... Okay, um, sorry for the break. My internet went off. I'm back now. So, uh, I was trying to answer the questions about. Um, um if a medication was prescribed by your doctor and it went off uh, i mean sorry and it's um and you read the, uh, the opposite of what you read in your the opposite of what you the doctor has prescribed the medication but what you're saying is that you should not use it so, so there are some drugs that doctors okay there are some medication that doctors are allowed to prescribe okay thank you so much sorry for the break <laughs> so there are some medication that doctors are allowed to prescribe uh even though the manufacturer may say the other way so what i will say in that instance is that you should ask your doctor first so if you ask your doctor your doctor will confirm to you whether yes it's aware and it thinks you can use it because sometimes we have to use it if the benefit of treating you outweighs the risks to your baby and what the doctor will do in that case is that they will monitor the baby for any side effects and all that so you really need to clarify with your doctor thank you all right let's move on okay i think we've answered this question already I'm taking this oh okay From yeah okay from Okea Folabi. Good morning, doctor, and well done, ma. Please, ma, I'm done with exclusive breastfeeding on July 23rd. Please, which food can I introduce to him? Okay. So about uh, complementary feeding, that's another whole topic on its own. So if you go to our unit section, we have a unit course on complementary feeding. I, I strongly recommend you do the course first so that you understand the process of, of uh, introducing complementary feeds and how to go about it because what to give, how to give it, how often to give it, details is better. So you watch short, short videos and it shows you everything. So it's not just a matter of, what should I give him? It's not one food you are going to give him. And it's not just any. Anyway. So it's more important to know how to give it and how often you should give it and all that. There's really nothing you cannot give when it comes to complementary foods. So that's just what I would say about that. All right, let's move on. Yeah, from yeah. Valentina. Kudos to me. I did exclusive breastfeeding for my baby. Yeah, and she was always looking for Thank you for that. <laughs> nice <laughs> testimony. <laughs> well done, yeah. From Cynthia, secondly, does breastfeeding the baby while lying down cause hair infection? No, no, no. I've answered that question like 100 times during this week already. No, breastfeeding while lying down doesn't cause the um, uh, hair infection. I infection, if you know how to breastfeed properly, your baby will be fine. But some people don't know how to breastfeed properly, so they... They kind of allow breast meat to track into the baby's here. So if you, if your baby is not properly positioned and the breast meat is leaking out and leaking into the hairs, the hairs can become wet, and that is what is causing. That can now lead to the the hairs getting infected. So that's why I say if you don't know breastfeed lying down, please don't do it. But if you know how to do it, it doesn't cause any form of hair infection. Sometimes I breastfeed my babies lying down. I when I was breastfeeding, and they didn't have any hair infection. All right, let's move on to the next question. Our time is running out. Them, uh, can I resume relaxation after one month? Yes, you can always. So this is a very popular question. So mother saw me, okay, I had CS, and because of that, they didn't give my baby to me. Because of that, I didn't start breastfeeding or see, uh, the bre I was sick for so many. There's no time you cannot start breastfeeding any anytime you're ready. So it's the same process, an hormone process. In fact, we can induce people who are not even pregnant to breastfeed and all that. There's a way to do it. So how much more you demand that? So you can just put your baby to the breast, let them suck. They suck, the hormones get activated, your breast milk will be let down. So you can always start breastfeeding. And if you have, maybe when you were baby, when you were ill or after having your baby, you couldn't breastfeed your baby, you were separated from your baby. 
that does not mean you can't do exclusive breastfeeding just like your own will not be up to six months but immediately after you have your baby it's not an excuse to continue the formula just go back to the breast milk and stop the formula so it's very very important all right so okay i think this is somebody calling somebody to come and watch uh you have to uh, make sure you tag them properly as yes, they won't say it from omolara olashubumi good morning doctor what's the implication for a baby taking both formula and breast milk from birth due to non-lactating of the mom she's four months now Ah, the mom is lactating now. The baby is taking both breast milk and formula. I mean, or you mean maybe the mom didn't start lactating on time, if that's what you meant. Okay, so uh, people ask me that question a lot because mothers are worried uh, what's the implication of misfeeding and all that. Now, the implication is that your baby doesn't get all the benefits of exclusive breastfeeding. So, so we tend to find that our babies on misfeeding, they are the ones that tend to complain of all this cold, catar, cough all the time. They are the ones that tend to come to the hospital all the time to see the pediatrician and all that. So they they are more produce, they are more at risk of allergic conditions, more risks of all those uh, uh, infections and all that. So that's just it. It doesn't mean that they, they would die or anything will happen to them. No, but it just that mothers who were breastfeed exclusively sometimes don't have to deal with some of these headaches you deal with so the when mother tell me my baby is having cough it's having cold it's having cancer the first thing i always ask them is your baby on exclusive breastfeeding because we found out that the ARIs, what we call acute respiratory infections they are way higher up there for babies who are on mixed feeding or who are not on breast milk compared to the same thing with diarrhea the same thing with uh, allergic conditions and all that so if you want to avoid some of this stress then you can make sure you exclusive breastfeed your baby also uh further down the line maybe it's with exclusive breastfeeding uh recessions that they i is a little bit a few points higher so there are benefits so it's just that the baby who is not on exclusive breastfeeding will lose out on some of those benefits and so it's not just about food because most of these breast milk substitutes what they give to your baby is just the food that's it but all the other additional benefits the immune system and all those uh immune pro uh, protection and all those other things protection against allergies and all that babies who are not on breastfeeding will will not benefit from such so it's not so this is not like we are trying to make anybody feel guilty or trying to put you on a guilty trip so that's why i answer it that way it's just for you to know what the benefits and what you miss if you don't do it that's all okay from lizabeth Please, what time should a baby start sitting? Yeah, usually five to six months, but try and keep your questions to breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just did that as a bonus for you. From Jumoke, good morning, doctor. God bless you for the good work you are doing here. Thank you, Jumoke. None so. I breastfed my three kids up to 18 months. Breastfeeding is based. Congratulations. Good job, eh? None so. Thank you. From Eniola, I noticed in some hospitals they don't put the baby on the mother's chest after the delivery. What they do is to the baby. What they do is to. I mean, they take the baby. Yeah, they would dress, yeah. They would dress him or her. Please, how can you help us on this? Uh, the nurses are watching, you know, the doctors are watching, you know, so they should know. <laughs> I think it's the nurses we need to beg for that, the midwives. and uh, Some of them, uh, they are more interested in the in the logistic of the work they are doing. In other words, they just want to clear you and the baby out of the delivery room, especially in government hospitals, so that even some private hospitals, so that a new mother can come and use that delivery suit. And of course, they want the baby to be looking nice and sweet for the um for the visitors who are coming to see the baby so i understand what they are trying to do uh so but even some of those places too what they will do is that they will say bring your baby to you to breastfeed within 30 minutes uh it's just that what we're saying is that it's really not necessary but we all know that in very busy hospitals and all that where they would definitely need to use that space they may not have that time uh it's easier if it is the same midwife doing both if the same midwife doing both your cleaning up and the baby then she can actually leave the baby on you while she's tidy up the mother sort out the placenta and all that and then she can come back to the baby but sometimes it's the there are two 
midwives on duty. So one is for the baby, one is for the mother. So the person for the baby wants to sort out the baby quickly. And so I think it's more of a logistic thing and all that. But the most important thing is that whether they put the baby to your bright, to your tummy and all that, they should get your baby to breastfeed within one hour. That's what WHO recommends that within one hour of delivery, you should be breastfeeding your baby. That's the most important thing. And so the putting the baby to breast is so that the baby can easily uh, locate the mother and lash onto the breast and all that. Yeah, but I really wish our nurses and midwives can comment about that and tell us <laughs> what, <laughs> why they don't. Uh, I can't speak for them, but I'm just assuming that's why some of them don't. Yeah. Ruth Jerry, what most vitamin is safe to use for a nursing mother? The same one you were using in pregnancy. The same one you were giving when you were pregnant. It's okay. That's it. Okay. Then from endurance, I breastfed my baby for two, six months exclusively. And now I introduce complementary feeding to her. She only takes little and she takes breast milk, little also. Is it okay? I eating a bit changed after we are done with exclusive breastfeeding. What do you mean addition habit change? She's not going to start eating complementary feeding the same way she was taking breast milk. And it means I'm suspecting that you are also trying to give a lot of uh, complementary feeds. Usually when you are starting after six months, it's, it's just one meal you had first, then you gradually build it up. So what I would just recommend, because today is about exclusive breastfeeding, I mean, it's about breastfeeding, not about complementary phase, which we have done before as well, is for you to go and do that our course. We have a unit course on complementary phase, is the unit two. For those of you who have done units one on breastfeeding, unit two is how to feed your baby, how often you should feed them and all that. So you will get more information. So most of the time when people say they're feeding habit change, you, you, it's because people are expecting them to stop breastfeeding. They are not going to stop breastfeeding. They are still going to be breastfeeding as much as they were breastfeeding before. It's only that you are adding. It's a compliment. You are adding to the breast milk, you are not taking out the breast milk completely. And you are not supposed to just replace, you are not replacing the breast milk completely with the complementary foods. All right, let's move on. Okay, how do I make my baby suck longer? She only sucks for five minutes on a single breast. No, that's not appropriate. And I, I get a lot of questions on people saying, my baby is only sucking one breast, please. There's no baby that is born sucking one breast. That is the mother's, you are the one that caused that and it's because you're only feeding that baby on that breast you should change your breast from one side to the other so let's say your baby suck on the left breast now and the baby is fine that's okay then move the baby when next you are going to start the baby on feeding you should start from the left don't just keep suck keeping them to one and i know it's easy because some of you you are right-handed so you just immediately you put your baby you always keep you because it's that's a convenient position for you but it's, it's because to, to do it on the other side it may not look always convenient because you are you always tend to defer to your stronger hand if you are right under your dominant hand. Please, this is not appropriate for your baby to be on a single breast. You should alternate your breast. If your mother came up and was kind of giving a testimony that she was able to breastfeed her baby on only one single breast and they are fine, that is not the way it should be. And it's because you were not breastfeeding on the other side. That's why their breast dries up. And if your baby is not breastfeeding well long enough, if you watch her breastfeeding video, it's because your baby is frustrated with breastfeeding. Because if your baby is sucking only on the nipple, no milk is coming out. And when no milk is coming out, the baby starts getting tired and then they don't want to suck anymore. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that your baby is properly lashed onto the breast. And I really strongly, strongly still recommend the breastfeeding videos. I'll put all of them on the announcement section of our group now on Ask and Facebook group. Please go and watch them. It's very easy because sometimes when we describe things, you may not get it, but when you see, you will actually see mothers breastfeeding for their babies. You will see how wide open the baby's mouth will be. You will see what part of the breast should be in the mouth. It's not the nipple. And that's why many of you always have this cracked nipple, sore nipple, and all that. You should be the whole of the nipple and the areola. Almost that black part of your breast, almost everything should be in the mouth. And when baby is sucking on that, that is where the milk sinuses are, the milk banks. That is where the milk is released from. When baby suck from that, the milk will be released and baby will suck until they are full. Usually it's like 10, 20 minutes until they are full or until that side is empty. Then you switch on to the other side and then you can press it from that side. And that's how it should be done. 
So uh, the first thing I would say for this mom is that most likely you are not properly latched. The baby is not properly uh, attached to the breast. And that's why the baby is frustrated. And that's why the baby is sucking. And the baby should not be sucking from a single breast. You should change the breast from both sides. There's no reason why you should be breastfeeding from one single breast. Why do you think you have two breasts? It's not like saying you'll be seen with one high. Why do you think you have two highs? Or you'll be breathing with one nose. Why do you think you have two nose? There's a reason why those parts of your body that are two are two because you need to use both of them. If it's only one that is enough, then you would not have needed the second one. So please, I don't want to be hearing, I just don't need to do one breast. I like, no, 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 please. Let's do the right thing. Thank you so much. I think our time is up. Okay, yeah, yeah we, we just have two questions. From Jennifer. Good Good <laughs> Thank you for the work you are doing. Please, my baby Thank of three you. months is on exclusive breastfeeding, but she can't yes. seem to get me off. She keeps crying after feed sometimes and prefers to suck hands so she sleeps what do i do this it is because she uh the baby if your baby is sucking hand is because baby is not there, there may be something wrong with the technique of breastfeeding and it means that that may, i mean you, 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 the baby when baby suck on the breast nothing is coming out and there's really no reason why nothing should be coming out so the first thing in when we get this kind of scenario the first thing you want to do is to um is to make sure your baby is properly attached to the breast for example if you want to know whether you're producing milk or not express your milk uh, mom that's always tell me i'm not sure i'm lactating enough express it press it out press it out let's see how much quantity do you get out and feed your baby with the breast milk when you press it out with a cup and a spoon and see whether your baby is okay or not because if you press it out and the baby takes the milk and baby cries only when baby is attached, which means the baby is not properly attached to the breast. And you see, I'll keep, I'll keep, if there's one message you're going to take away from me today, is that breast milk operates on the law of demand and supply. That's it. Just put that at the back of your brain. If your baby is sucking on the nipple and the breast milk is not being, pro is not coming out to the baby, the baby is frustrated. But what is also happening to you, the mother, is that the milk is not coming out. So the brain, the, the body stops producing more milk because it wants what is inside to be out first before it can produce more. So it's so both ways the baby is frustrated because the baby is not sucking on the milk, or the milk is not coming out, and the milk is getting less and less because it, there's no production because what has been produced has not been sucked out. So the the number one reason I think most mothers always have problems with breastfeeding or with milk production is because the, the, the baby is not properly attached to breast. And I'm, I apologize to all of you because I think it's our responsibility as the healthcare professionals to show you and I'm calling all the midwives and all the nurses listening to me. Please show the new mothers how to properly attach their baby to the breast. It's very, very important. Most new mothers don't do it properly. They just put the nipple in the mouth. That is actually the not the right way to breastfeed your baby. And that is one of the reasons the babies cry and they get frustrated because they keep sucking and nothing is coming out. Then the baby will cry. It shows that this baby is not feeding on the breast milk properly. So please, please, and that's why I've been uh, uh, challenging everybody to go and watch those breastfeeding videos because we, I, I watched it along with you yesterday and I saw the way they described it. How you do you know? Because when you, there's no way your baby will suck on your breast and the milk will not flow out. And if the milk is flowing out, more milk will be produced. Demand and supply. But if there's no demand or the water has been produced is not yet let out, it will stop. And that is it. And before you know it, the breast can dry up. It's just like it's as if you have stopped. It's as if you have winged your baby. That's it. That's exactly that's exactly what happened when you win the baby. Because when you stop baby sucking on the breast, the milk stop after two three days. It will dry up. It will stop producing. That is just the same principle. So it is very very important that the babies are properly attached to the breast. It's not to the nipple. It's to the areola. It should be all seen in the mouth of the baby. It should not be seen that black part of your breast. Almost everything should be in the mouth of the baby. That is where the milk is. And if you have that issue, you can also press out your milk. So then you will see whether you're lactating or not. So if you press out your milk, sometimes that's what we do for you when you come to the hospital. We do have babies we had meals as a pediatrician for, because of this scenario. And what we do is we'll just get you to express the milk and then we'll feed the baby with the milk and then we'll keep doing that. And you will see, before you know it, baby start gaining weight because we can be sure of how much quantity the baby is, get, is getting when we express it out. We can measure it and all that. So the, the problem is not the baby, the problem is not with the milk, the problem is the technique. And also do that, your baby will be fine. 
So uh, uh, the mom who I just asked, for what check out your technique. And when you've check, finished checking out your technique, and um, please make sure that you um, uh, you do it right way, and and then your baby. So, and don't stress because if you are stressed already, and I so assume you are stressed, if your baby is crying and not sucking, those things stress up mothers a lot. Your milk will also stop being produced. <laughs> it's contrary. It's also like a vicious cycle now. So, and that's why most mothers get frustrated and then they go back to formula. But if you still want to do it. Go see your pediatrician or your midwife or your matrons in the hospital, and then they can uh, they can help you uh, and, and 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 do that. Okay. Oh my God! I thought we finished. A month people are coming in. Um, <laughs> All right. We have to take more questions and because of our okay, time. Exclusive breastfeeding for my three children. Exclusive breastfeeding is big. I enjoy it a lot. Then Uluwa Sheya Keju. Well done, my baby is on exclusive breastfeeding four months now. I observe the experiences cough and kata easily, keep him warm to the extent he sweats. Now I like to know other things to do. Thank you. I think you should see your doctor to be sure what is what else is going on. Another thing why your baby have cough and kata is are there people with cough and kata around the baby? Are there people use smoking cigarettes in the house? Are you cooking in the kitchen in the house and the smoke, the smell of your food is getting to your baby? Is there are you frying food? Those those are the other things. So when people just say one or two things, you have to look at all the other things. That's why you have to read all my responses like. You have to check all those things. Your baby going to the crutch, being exposed to other babies, who is having cough and cutter. If you have to cross out everything, so just the fact that you are breastfeeding and exposed and keeping baby warm is not enough. You, all those other things must also be ruled out as well. So you may want to see a doctor first to make sure that all the other ones are right. So this is the final question. We gotta go yeah, now. Baby is almost five months, but always wants to suck. Even when I feel no more milk in the breast, what should I do? So there's nothing absolutely wrong with baby always wanting to suck. And I, I always say that to the moms because mothers always think, oh, my baby should be, uh, my baby should, uh, my baby should not be, uh, why is baby always sucking? Babies just have to like sucking. Sometimes they don't suck because they are hungry. Sometimes they suck because they, they, they just want to feel their mothers near them. They just want reassurances and all that. So those are all parts of uh, bonding. So sometimes a baby just want to feel you. They not because, so it's not all sucking that is hunger. So that's just one thing mothers don't get. So and that's what people always see because baby is always sucking. Baby must be hungry or the baby must be maybe the breast milk is not enough. No. So sometimes baby is full. You yourself, you can feel the tummy that they are full and all that, but they just want your warmth. They just want to feel their mom. And that's why they are always sucking. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So don't stress about it. Yes, that's it. Just leave it. Let them suck. They, <laughs> it's part of their life. Sucking is actually a pleasurable thing for, for most babies. So they do it sometimes just because they just want their mother clothes or they just want to feel that sucking pleasure that's why some people use uh, pacifiers and all that but we don't recommend that because they are good source of charms and they can also create um uh, uh nipple confusion and all that all right thank you so so much everyone for joining us this morning and thank you to salah we've gone more than 70 minutes past our closing time uh so we just want to thank you so much for joining us so the breastfeeding uh week continues to the seventh uh, so um, tomorrow is our celebration of breastfeeding baby. So if you are those of you that are giving testimony of how you breastfed your babies, please please go ahead and put it up. If you have any uh, comments or questions, or if you have any frustration or challenges and you want to share how you overcome, feel free to put it up. For the first time, we'll leave it. We'll leave our world open on a Sunday so that we can just celebrate breastfeeding babies. We're still going to have another uh, question answer section on. Uh, I know some of you have not answered your question. I've told you already, be patient. I can't answer 400 questions. <laughs> and even that day I was answering your question, I was in transit most of the time. But we'll get to answer most of your questions. Just be patient. And if you still have your questions, Monday is another day. And then we're going to have our breastfeeding quiz. I think it's on Tuesday. And then we'll have, so if you are, if you are very comfortable, of confident of your knowledge about breastfeeding, Yes, feel free to join us on Tuesday, and then we'll, 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 um, we'll, 
uh, see who is going to be our winner for the breastfeeding quiz. We do it annually. And then finally, on um, uh, what's it called? On uh, on is it Wednesday? Yeah, we're going to have our finale, grand finale, where we're going to do a draw. For those of you who have completed the breastfeeding units, we are going to draw, do a draw, just say fun thing and give price. I've not decided what our prices will be, but there'll be a price for the quiz winner and there'll be a price for the uh, the people that got the breastfeeding challenge. So just get ready. So, But most importantly, we're just trying to empower you, which is the team of this breastfeeding week, to keep on breastfeeding. And we are here to support your breastfeeding experience. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Lusola? Thank you. Thank you very much, our viewers. I'm sure you had a wonderful time. We hope you join us same time next week, 10 a.m. Thank you so much, Dr. Gwensola Bumiti, for enlightening yeah. more mm -hmm. once again on how to go about breastfeeding. I'm sure we've learned one or two things. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.